it's been just over two months since the launch of RDNA 4 with the 9070 and 9070 XT. And we're just days away from the launch of the 9060 series. So what's happened in the last two months plus as regards performance of RDNA 4 on Linux? Well, we're going to take a look at that today. We're going to have the usual side-by-sides, as, as we'll see in a minute. We've got side-by-side uh, -side footage from several games. We have Cyberpunk, Witcher 3, Horizon Forbidden West, Last of Us Part 2, Ghost of Tsushima, Oblivion Remastered, and Counter-Strike 2. And we're going to take a look at the performance of Windows versus Linux, uh, specifically Kashi OS. Okay, this is an Arch-based Linux. It's very often requested in the comments of my videos that I actually cover. Kashi OS is very popular and it's uh, uh, heavily optimized for gaming uh, and performance in general. So um, very recently we've had the release of Adrenaline 25.5.1, which has supported games like Oblivion Remastered. It's introduced FSR 4 to more games. And we've also in the last week had the release of Mesa 25.1.0 drivers. So it's a new branch, 25.1. Um, it, it, it obviously should have rolled up everything from 25.0 to this point. But um, let's look at the platform that I'm using for the testing. It's a 13700K i7 Intel processor. So um, running at stock speeds, a decent processor. Um, for the GPU, it's specifically the Gigabyte Aorus Elite 9070 XT factory OC model. Now, this is... 150 megahertz above the, the standard uh, core frequency. Uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3600 RAM and, uh, you know, Gen 4 SSDs, etc. Now, on the Windows side, Windows 11 Pro, the latest 24H2 update, all the, the latest updates, and, of course, uh, in the last uh, few days, the 25.5.1 Adrenaline drivers, okay, which, as I said, has introduced FSR, for example, to uh, some more games. Um, on the Linux side, we have Cache OS tw uh, 250422, and that's been updated to the latest Mesa 25.1.0 uh, open source drivers for AMD Intel CPUs, uh, AMD CPUs, etc. Uh, kernel 6.14.6 .6 is the very latest stable kernel release. It, it, this particular version is uh, you know, the, the Cache OS version of Linux uh, does a lot of optimization okay, in terms of scheduling, uh, you know, CPU scheduling, scheduling all kinds of stuff like that. And, and that should, in theory, uh, be good for gaming. Now, it doesn't always make a difference, but, but uh, it's just uh, good to be aware that this is not necessarily just your bog standard uh, kernel. And KD Plasma 6.3.5 using the Wayland Compositor. Now, the release notes are up there. Uh, it was released on the 7th of May. And if you search down through it, you, you might be interested. What, well, what's in there for RDNA 4? Well, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's non-specific, whether it's RDNA 2, 3, 4, Polaris, you know, older generations, etc. Um, you, once you go down through the new features, bug fixes, etc., you'll see generic entries in the list, and you'll see specific entries to specific GPUs from specific or, or specific generations or even specific games. Okay, so as an example, we have the only mentions that I could see of the, the 9070 series of GPUs. We have, you know, some kind of CPU hang, a, a bug that was fixed in the RAD-V, the, the Vulkan driver, and uh, some issue... Uh, uh, when something comes out of uh, of a sleep state on the 9070 XT, obviously there were some issues there, and uh, some kind of timeout again after waking from sleep. So obviously there's an issue with, uh, or was an issue, coming out of uh, uh, hibernation or a sleep state on your PC or your device. Um, but apart from that, there's nothing specific that I could see to RDNA 4 other than those. So... Um, my sense of it is that in terms of RDNA 4, it's, it's focusing primarily on stability at the moment. I don't think uh, performance is really the, the main thing at the moment. So I, I think it'll be a while 
yet before we see significant performance improvements for our RDNA 4. Um, you have to remember that there's only a couple of GPUs out and, um, you know, it's it's not long out and uh, the 9060 series isn't even out yet. So a lot more of that uh, optimization to do uh, or, you know, bug fixing and so on. Um, and FSR 4 then is another issue. My gut feeling is that it's going to be a long time before we do see FSR 4 support uh, officially. Um, I do think that in terms of FSR 4, there may be a lot of kind of proprietary stuff, and I think there's a lot of specific documentation that the developers of the Mesa drivers need before they can start introducing support for FSR 4. So I'm slightly pessimistic on that front. Um, you'll see from some of the footage that there's a couple of games that missed out on having FSR 4 and they had to use FSR 3, whereas the, the version on Windows was using FSR 4 and that there can be a noticeable difference in quality. But let's move on to the actual f footage, and we'll begin with a recent release, Oblivion Remastered, 4K high using FSR quality, and you'll notice that I do have an asterisk here. And on Windows, it's FSR 4, and on Cache OS, it's FSR 3. So let's play the, the footage now. And... What you'll notice is there's not a great deal of difference in terms of the, the stats. Uh, slightly smoother on Windows than Linux, but otherwise uh, quite similar performance. Now, FSR 4 does have an overhead, so you have to take that into account as well. Um, when you introduce uh, frame generation, you get a great experience, though. Um, I do find in some of these examples that introducing frame generation made a bit of a difference. If we just pause it uh, there and, and go back to frame generation here. You can see the, now it's one about 135 versus 125 and a little bit behind on Cache OS, but a bit smoother. Um, so you can see a very, very flat uh, line here. So that, that's, that's good to see, it's quite smooth. And it does seem, you know, there's a lot of naysayers about frame generation, but I'm going to show you, if you're on Linux and you have this GPU, then you're going to be looking for any little kind of hacks or a little bit, bit of help that you can get. And frame generation actually turns out to be uh, to be one of those. Okay, let's move myself uh, down here out of the way so I'm not floating in midair. And um, it, this is one very good example where I think frame generation actually made a very significant difference to the smoothness. Uh, it felt very responsive. And it, it, it does seem to help out the CPU and the, the, the driver overhead quite a lot. So um, let's move on to Horizon Forbidden West. Um, this is very poor on Linux, unfortunately, with the 1% lows in particular. Um, if you notice the CPU usage, and if we go back again, just watch the, the GPU usage, and it's going all over the place compared to Windows. Windows is fairly stable at 96 plus. Um, but when you introduce frame generation, again, it's almost like this miraculous change where the GPU now is being fully utilized. Everything looks very smooth. Moving on to the last of us, part two, 4K high. Again, the caveat there with the different versions of uh, FSR. Um, both performing extremely well at 4K high with FSR quality. Um, the Linux version slightly ahead, but again, you have to take into account the overhead of uh, FSR 4 on, on Windows. So that was excellent, but uh, here's another problem for Linux. And with, uh, you know, we're talking about minus 36% on the 1% lows here and a very, very jagged line here. And very similar to Horizon Forbidden West, uh, the GPU usage bouncing up and down. And, uh, you know, there's obviously some kind of uh, overhead there that's, uh, some kind of bottleneck that's introducing uh, maybe higher CPU usage and uh, causing uh, not enough frames to be sent to the GPU for rendering and it's bouncing around the place. But as we'll see coming up shortly, when we introduce frame generation, again, it's the great equalizer. Um, it, it catches right up to uh, Windows and in fact uh, gets a little bit smoother. Uh, moving on to Cyberpunk and 4K Ultra, 
with FSR quality. Same FSR on both. Um, not much in it, slight, slight lead for Windows. Both, you know, a, a decent uh, experience on both. But of course, when we introduce ray tracing, uh, that is uh, an issue. It's, it's, it's been an issue for a while, and it's uh, an issue as, uh, for our RDNA 4, uh, you know, and, and who knows when we're going to see any major improvements in this. But it is very significantly behind when it comes to, we, we've dropped down to 1440p here, RT Ultra FSR quality. Um, not the best uh, image quality. It's 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 very kind of uh, unstable. There's a lot of uh, flickering and uh, jagged edges and so on. So it's very very unstable. Um, not definitely not the way I would play this game either on Windows or uh, Linux. I would I would definitely go native, which I think Windows Eleven could handle, but uh, uh, Linux would would definitely struggle. But you'd you'd want to be dropping down to 1080p for for your ray tracing uh, at the higher uh, settings anyway and if we introduce frame generation linux cache os it becomes playable at these settings um, but you can look at, at windows there and see it, it has a massively high refresh rate so a big difference there uh, the witcher 3 another problem area for linux it's playable it's pretty smooth it just happens to be 30% behind. Uh, Counter-Strike 2, and let me just pause here for a second because we have, uh, as I'm often asked for when I produce Counter-Strike 2 footage, um, I'm often asked to show you know, DirectX 11 and Vulkan footage as well. And you can see that the DirectX 11 is the, by far the, the highest and smoothest in terms of performance. Uh, Vulkan on Windows lags a bit behind and the 1% lows lag behind further and then it gets even worse with uh, Cache OS. So definitely some issues there. Not that it's not playable or anything. You can definitely drop down to 1440p or, or you do 4K low settings, low, low preset or whatever. You could definitely much, much improve this. But I'm just demonstrating that there is uh, uh, quite a difference in performance terms. Let's let's sum things up. I don't have any big charts or anything. I think you got a good flavor of it there. Um, some games, roughly on par, a couple of games, you know, like Oblivion and The Last of Us um, were pretty much in the, the, the same ballpark as Windows uh, versus Linux. Um, other games, significant uh, deficit for Linux. Like, uh, obviously, Counter-Strike is always a deficit, no matter what generation of uh, GPU you're talking about. Um, significant issues in Ghost of Tsushima and Horizon Forbidden West, which were greatly improved by frame generation. So, you know, if you've made your mind up and you ha you're using Linux, you've always used Linux, maybe, and you want to get these GPUs, um, maybe you're thinking they'll improve over time. Rather than buy a second-hand one, you get a new one, and you'd hope that, you know, in the next 6 to 12 months, that there'll be significant uh, improvements in the, the quality of the driver for RDNA 4. Um, and in that case, uh, I think that these are examples of where frame generation is actually a massive help. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a, a crutch or anything. There, it's not down to the developers as such. It's just, I think, driver issues, and frame generation is a big help. So that's where it is. That's where, you know, coming up to the 9060 and 9060 XT being released in a few days, uh, by all accounts, um, this is the state of RDNA 4 on Linux. I looked at it at, uh, just after launch, and I'm seeing pretty much the same thing. So stable, I would say. I'm not getting any crashes, but there haven't been any performance improvements really since launch. Um, that's, a, that's disappointing, but... Brand new generation, we have to give it time and hope for the best. Um, so if you like these side-by-sides, if you like all the uh, performance tests and so on, please subscribe, like the video, and hopefully I will see you in the next video.